Welcome back to another episode of Sean's Stance. And before we get into it, make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, turn on that notification bell so you know when our videos go live. And if you'd like to come on live with us when we record these, join us on Instagram at Sean's Couture. We go live every weekday night at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time. So we'll see you there. Till then, make sure that you comment below. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Is there something maybe I missed? Let me know. All right, so as you guys are getting logged on here, as always, if you'd like to come work with me, suitsandposing.com is where you have to go. We do hair, makeup, suits, and posing. All the fun stuff for women when competing. Welcome, you guys. Some uh, housekeeping stuff. Our live stream tickets for Cuties Conference Stage are available right now. So the uh, link is in my bio here. If you get, if you are on our email list or if you're registered for the ticket launch for the live stream, then you have those emails as well. You can go through the link there. So make sure you grab your ticket. So that's there for you. If you are not coming in person, the live stream is fully interactive. So we will have um, members of our speaker, speakers, some of our speakers actually on manning the chat, talking to you. Uh, you can chat in, ask questions of our speakers as if you were there in the room. Uh, when we go through our practical time and do posing, you get to actually pose with the people that are there, the, the coaches and the speakers that we have in the room. You'll get a chance to pose with them, pull you up on Zoom. Everything goes through Zoom, so we can pull you up and actually do posing with you. So it is an interactive live stream. It's not just one of these things where you pull it up on your computer and you watch. No, you get to participate. So. Again, it's like you're almost there there with us. You're just from your comfort of your own home. Um, Ashlyn Little, she ran our live stream last year and she's coming as a full speaker this year because the ladies on the live stream loved her so much and she did such a great job. So everybody wanted her to come back and actually speak this year. So, um, so it's actually a really, really great way to get involved with the Cuties Conference stage. I know some of you guys, like the only way that you know me right now is through these, through these free live feeds and through, you know, YouTube and, and things like that. So that's the only way you actually know me. Uh, getting in on the actual live stream, you'll get to know a little bit more about what we're all about and get to participate as well. So great way to get you into our community, right? Um, so with that, talking about community and all of that, we're going to talk about social media tonight. So this was a question that was brought up uh, from one of our viewers. Actually, I think she just logged on, I'm pretty sure, um, that watched our um, live stream that we talked about. Um, got your live stream today. Awesome. Wonderful. Um, that's great. And that means you got free bonuses too. So that's good too. Um, so this question was asked based on, you know, the social media having to do with placements and things like that. So social media in reference to um, sponsorships. So social media and sponsorships can go a few different ways. Um, I'm gonna tell you kind of how I look at social media when I'm looking at getting sponsored athletes onto my team. Uh, and then I'll kind of give you an overview of what some other companies might look at differently than me. When it comes to me and what I'm looking for, I do an athlete search every year and I sign on sponsored athletes every year. And I do take social media into account, but not in the way that a lot of people think. Um, I don't care about numbers. To be perfectly honest with you, you could have, you know, a few, a couple thousand followers and you might actually be a better sponsored athlete for me than, um, than you would be if you had hundreds of thousands of sponsors, right? Um, or hundreds of thousands of numbers, right? So, um, I've actually signed on athletes previously that had a really high social media following and that's one of the reasons why I chose them and they were some of my worst sponsored athletes. <laughs> <laughs> they were some of my worst because a lot of times when people have a high number of you know followers and things like that they are an advertising machine right like they're out there advertising for everyone so it's not genuine the stuff that I do it has to it has to be really genuine you know it has to come from the heart it has to come from here so I'm looking for somebody who actually really believes in our brand and you know wants to share that with other like-minded athletes you know um so for me that the big social media following is not something that i personally need i need somebody who can genuinely connect with their audience that's what i need right so i look at things a little bit differently i go onto these social media platforms of this potential sponsored athletes and i look at how they interact with their followers I look at their messaging. 
I look at um, how they respond. I look at the posts that they put out, the messages that they're actually putting out, the quality versus the quantity, if that makes sense. So personally, that's the way I look at social media. So if you, like a good example is I, my business caters to women, right? So <clears throat> all the ladies that I sign on, I want them to have a pretty strong female following. Um, if you're just out there showing butts and boobs, <laughs> you may have a fantastic social media following, but if it's all men, it's not going to help me. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help my business. My business, I don't care about the guys. I care about the women, right? So when I look at the, the social media following of girls that I'm potentially going to sign on for my company, I got to make sure that the message, the market message matches. Like, I don't care if you have 100,000 followers, if they're all just horny dudes. That doesn't do me any good. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't, frankly. Um, so I look at it a little bit deeper. I look at it a little bit deeper as far as what I want. It's a person that I want representing my company. Um, I even look at that when I'm looking at sponsors for Cuties Conquering the Stage, when I'm looking at people that I'm bringing in, when I'm looking at, um, you know, speakers and, and different things like that. Like I, I do, I look at those things. Like I want them to have a message that they're putting out there that is going to resound with the ladies that are coming to my event. Right? <laughs> so true. Good point. Right. I mean, it's, it's huge, especially for a small business like myself. It's huge. It's a huge deal. Like uh, it's got to match my market, you know? So again, great. If you have hundreds of thousands of followers, I'm sure that you can push that into, you know, a different type of sponsorship. But if you don't match with my market, it's not going to do me any good as a business, right? I have some sponsored athletes who have little to no social media presence at all. But because they do great work in the gym, they're, they're great trainers, things like that or whatever, they may, may be some of my highest uh, referring athletes that I have because of the relationships that they have with their, with their clientele. So I look, instead of numbers on social media for me, I look at the relationship that you have with your following, right? That's what I'm looking at. And I'll tell you this, a lot of companies look at it that way. A lot of companies look at it that way. Um, they they want to make sure that whoever they are investing their time and their energy and their money into is actually investing that back into their following and back into people that are going to bring it back to them, if that makes sense. So if you're trying try to get these big, huge contracts and things like that, like, you know, bang, energy drink or something like that, then yeah, you got to have some, some decent numbers. You got to have some, a decent following for that kind of thing. I, yeah, absolutely. hundred percent you do. Um, but you know, you look at a lot of those people that are way up there in the, the upper realm when it comes to their social media following, and they're usually not representing companies. They usually own their own. They usually have their own companies. They're usually, you know, promoting their own products, right? Relationship is so key. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. So, and, 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 and I really believe that if you have one of those big, huge social media followings, you should have your own company and you should be making your, your, your bones off of that. You know, you shouldn't be giving it to somebody else. You should be using it to build your own, to build your own platform, to build your own business. Right. I hadn't heard of cuties car in the stage. It sounds so fun. Well, you came to the right place. <laughs> There's a link in my in my bio here that you can click through, and that'll give you a little bit more information on that. So there's there's um, there's ticket sales and things like that in there for you, the live stream and all of that. So um, it's been this is our seventh year of Cuties Carping the Stage. So yeah, facts. So so again, if you're one of these mid range people, you know that that you're looking to potentially get signed on with a sponsor. Make sure that the, the messaging that you're putting out into the social media land actually matches with what that sponsor does, right? CCTS is amazing. I go every year. Yes, you do, Raven. You do go every year, even when you were nine months pregnant. <laughs> Literally going to pop on stage. <laughs> that was her first year. Um, so, you know, you want that message, that market message match, right? So, um... One of the things I think is a huge turnoff as a company, 
I get this. I don't get it a whole lot, but I do get this, is when somebody writes in to me saying they love my company, they love what I do, and can I sponsor them? Yet they have never done business with me ever before. <laughs> I'm like, I, that always makes me kind of shake my head. I'm like, if you love my business so much, why haven't you bought a suit from me? Why haven't you done posing with me? Why haven't you done anything with me if you love me so much, right? Yep, and still pose. You sure did, Raven. You sure did. Um, you know, I, I, I want somebody who has actually worked with me before I decide that I want them representing my business. You know, like that, to me, that just sounds like common sense, right? So this, think about that concept, like when you're going to try to apply for a sponsorship for some, you know, maybe for a supplement company or something like that. If you don't actually use their supplements, why are you trying to get sponsored by them? Right? Like you should, you should be like a customer already. <laughs> like, that's, I mean, that's my two cents, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like you, you should, you should actually believe in that business and what that business sells and, you know, the products that they have and the services that they have. You should actually be a customer before you want to represent them. Just me as a business owner, it is a huge red flag when somebody writes into me and they're like, oh, I love your stuff, but they've never actually done anything with me. Well, if you love me so much, you would think you would have worked with me at some point. <laughs> right? Like, for real. <laughs> Part of the reason I decided to apply for your sponsorship in 2020 because you put your energy and efforts into helping the amateurs. Yes, I do. And now look where we are. Absolutely. 100%. And I, I really, like, that's my favorite way to bring on sponsored athletes. And I'll talk about that in a second. So... I was nervous when I applied for your search because my following is little to none. I'm grateful for your perspective on this. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me when it comes to that. What matters to me is the relationship, not the numbers, right? Yeah, Sneak Sean is mama cutie for real. Yeah, right? <laughs> also promote the business without expecting anything. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Like if you believe in someone or something or some product or whatever, you know, you probably should be probably should be boosting them, especially if they're small businesses, guys. Like we we thrive off of, uh, um, you know, word of mouth. We thrive off of that relationship, right? You know, I, I would prefer. I tell you guys this all the time. I would prefer to spend my money like having you guys advertise for me, giving you stuff to advertise for me, versus giving it to like Facebook. You know, I can put Facebook ads up and, and, and get clients that way, but I would rather give you the money and bring clients in that way, right? I would rather do it that way because I'm giving back to you. You're giving back to me. Everybody wins. Um, and going into, you know, what Shanika was saying here, that is my favorite way to bring on sponsored athletes. So for those of you that don't know, I do the Pro Performer Promise. And what that is, is if you're wearing my suit when you win your IFBB Pro Card, then you automatically win a sponsorship for the remainder of your career. Um, that for me is the best way for me to bring on sponsored athletes because I know that you're invested in me because you bought a suit with me. You know, you're invested with me. And then I am invested with you and we grow together and we grow together. And I love that. I love that, that concept because you, you understand it coming from a point as an amateur and a brand new competitor and the heights that we can get to, right? I suck at social media. I'm even afraid to apply. Well, that's the whole thing. Like you can't be afraid either. But like I said, you know, you should have some sort of a relationship with the company prior to asking them to just give you money or sponsor you or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that should be, that should just be a given, I think, right? So, you know, some things to take, take away from this, some things to keep in mind. Uh, you wanna make sure that whatever you're putting into your social media matches with the market that you're trying to speak to, right? If you're trying to reach out to women like I do, you know, I want, I want my content here on this page to reach out and speak to you ladies. You know, I don't care about the guys. The guys can go on some other page. I don't care. Go watch your bodybuilding stuff. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I want you ladies to relate to what I have to say. So I'm going to put content out that's going to help you because then that's going to in turn help me. Right? So you as an athlete, you have to think about that too. What companies do you actually want to align with? What companies are you interested in being with? You know, what companies are you interested in, in working for? 
because that's what a sponsorship is. Once you actually are given a sponsorship, then you have to actually work. Sponsorships don't just like make you, <laughs> you know, once you get into a sponsorship contract, you have things you have to do in order to keep that sponsorship, just like you do with a job, just like you do with a job. So you better be okay with the job requirements of being a sponsored athlete of that particular brand and your market better match what they want. Your market better match what they actually want from you, right? If it doesn't, you gotta start you gotta start figuring out where you want your brand to go. You are a brand. You gotta start thinking about it that way. You gotta understand where your brand wants to go, right? And for some companies, numbers matter. For some companies, numbers absolutely do matter. When you're getting up into bigger companies, things like that, they do. But honestly, if you're getting up into those higher realms of, of numbers on social media, you should be using those to build your own thing. Just my two cents. Just my two cents. Right? Build it. You know, as they say, if you build, if you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. Right? Any questions, you guys? I want to open this up to questions. I wanted to give you guys some really simple things to be thinking about when you're trying to actually build your brand and create a brand for social media for yourself. And the way that you speak through social media can definitely affect your sponsorships. You know, that's one of the things that I put into my agreements with my sponsored athletes is how they have to conduct themselves, their code of conduct, that kind of thing. And if I see things that are being posted that go against that, it's a problem. It's a problem. I've had to, I have had to remove sponsored athletes. Not very many. Most, most of them are pretty good. I've had to, I've had to let go a couple just from... Uh, stuff that goes against our our core our core values and our core beliefs. You know, I'm pretty lenient. You guys know that. Those of you that are my sponsored athletes, you guys know that. I want you to express yourself, and I want you to feel comfortable with expressing yourself. But there comes a point where it's it it goes a little too far. You know, is a is 10k considered a baseline for most sponsorships? Wasn't sure if the bodybuilding world with a lot of followers and members means. Honestly, it really depends on the company. Again. Numbers mean nothing to me. I have some sponsored athletes that have 2,000 followers and that's it. You know, for me, it doesn't matter. For, for me, it really doesn't matter. And again, I brought on girls that have had hundreds of thousands of followers and it does not make a difference. <laughs> it's actually, I've act, again, I've, I've tried it that way. I've brought on girls with a big following and I got zero results from it. Zero. Zero. <laughs> so my, and again, my business is very much a relationship business. It's not a one-off product kind of thing. You're not gonna go on my website and buy, you know, I don't know, earbuds, I don't know, protein powder. You're not gonna do that. I don't have that kind of thing. Mine is a relationship kind of kind of product. So mine is different. It's not something where you're just gonna point and click. You know, you gotta get to know us. Gotta get to know our community in order to be, a, you know, in order to be in it, in it, if that makes sense, right? So when I'm concerned, what I'm concerned with, there's no, there's no baseline for numbers for me. Now, every other company may have a different policy in place. Like I said, there are companies who you do have to have a certain number of followers before they before they will even look at you. You know, and, and usually they'll put that in their bylaws. They'll put that in the, the requirements when you like apply for a sponsorship or something that you have to have so many followers in order for that to be a thing, right? And our business though, and I think in bodybuilding in general, a lot of this is very much a relationship business. It's very much a relationship business because it's a small, it's a small niche. It's not a big, it's not a big niche. It's a small niche. So relationships are, are essential, are key, right? Making sure that you are doing the things that are going to help out your companies that you're actually signed with, that kind of thing. So if you have a Bikini Pro account and healthy following and separately an account focused on the male market, does that put the sponsorship at risk? Uh, it really depends on the sponsorship. Again, some some companies don't care about that stuff. Some companies don't care. Um, some companies don't care about you know what you actually post and things like that, um, or if you keep things separate or whatever. Um, some companies do. You know, like. I, you know, for me personally, I, I'm, again, I'm very lenient. I'm very open to what you want to post, you know, but when I'm looking at you as somebody that could be an asset to my, my team, I want to see, 
posts that are going to be an asset to my, my business, right? If, if I don't see anything on your, your profiles that's going to be an asset to me, then what am I doing, right? You know, like what, I, I, you're, you're not a right, the right match, that's all. You actually may be a turnoff for my clientele. So I have to look at those kinds of things, right? Then you have us that don't do social media and just have loud mouths I, that just don't stop talking about how fabulous CCTS is. Yes, that's right. Like I said, I have ladies that don't, that don't do a whole lot on social media, but they still refer a ton of clientele to me. That's why, again, this, the numbers to me don't make a huge difference. The numbers don't make a huge difference to me. It's a relationship. Seems there are many people who buy followers. I see people with 10K plus followers and with 80 likes on a post. I don't understand how this would benefit anyone. Yes, buying followers is also a thing. And that's also showing you differences in markets too. Uh, for example, like I said, like if you're putting out booty pics all the time, you may get hundreds and hundreds of likes on those. And then you put up a like a legitimate fitness post and you get like 50. That's a market mismatch. If I'm, if I'm the fitness person, if I'm looking for the booty pics, it's a great market match. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you, you know, you, you got to know your market. You got to know your market, right? So I have a personal Instagram and then I have my business Instagram. So I don't post the same stuff on both Instagrams. There's a reason for that. It's two different markets. It's two different markets. By the way, can't wait for CCTS. Yes, yes, yes. I know. I can't wait either. It's coming come, come quick. It's going to come quick. It's going to come fast. It's crazy. So, um, but yeah, so you just have to be aware of who you are speaking to. You know, you have to be aware of who you're speaking to. Right. Um, but anyway, so yeah, just understand your... Um, your, your market, your market match. Okay. And if you don't know what that is, take some time to sit down and figure it out. Take some time to sit down and figure it out. You know, figure out who you actually want to speak to, you know, figure out who your, who your clientele is on your social media platforms. Once you figure that out, once you figure out what your market actually is and what you actually want to project to them, it'll be a whole lot easier to, to put content out and stuff too. Right? I can't wait to stay around at CCTS. It's going to be epic. Yes, it sure is. Sure is. It's gonna be a great year. I can't wait. No more COVID problems this year as far as restrictions are concerned. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna, we have the, uh, the upscale version this year with all of the trimmings. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, any other questions you guys on the social media aspect? I wanna leave it open for another minute or two here and just uh, leave it open for your questions. <laughs> agreed agreed yes my first ccts excited yay yeah see here's a great example you came in on the live feed last year and now you're coming in person this year so the live feed is a great way to again dip your toe in <laughs> get, get your get your feet wet you know the live stream and then maybe you'll want to come next year right live stream was fun well i'm glad that everybody had such a great time in the live feed last year we had a ton of really great feedback from the live stream that everybody had a great time. So, um, so that, that, that's really cool. We had quite a few ladies that were on the live stream last year. Now we're coming in person this year, just like you, just like you. So yeah, everybody was on the live. Like, I can't believe I'm not there in person. <laughs> Same live stream last year and going in person this year. There you go. See, look at that. I love it. I love it. That's perfect. See, again, you just got your feet wet. Got an idea of what we do. Got an idea of what it was all about. Now you get to come in person. I love it. You mentioned seeking athletes yearly. So you do this primarily at the shows you go to see. No, I do an athlete search. I do an athlete search every year in January. I uh, appreciate the love live feed because I can't come in person. Yeah, I know. You're on the other side of the world. That's a little bit difficult for you. <laughs> it was interactive and all the content was on the same vibe. Yep, sure was. Sure was. Love it. So yeah, no, I do an athlete search every every year at the beginning of the year. 
Yep, in January. And so. that's it. We do have um, more YouTube content up. I'll put this one up as well, because this was, this was a requested topic. It's, it's an often requested topic, so I'll go ahead and put this one up as well. Um, we're trying to get that subscriber number up. Uh, keep going over there, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like, comment, all of that for us. Um, the more that you can do that over there, the more interaction we can get, the better our channel will get, right? CCTS is a must for everyone. I love it. I love it. SWS this weekend. Yep. This weekend is SWS. For those of you that are new here, SWS is Sundays with Sean. It's our group posing class. So we have that this Sunday and we will go live during that group posing class too. So if you want to go ahead and jump on here uh, on Sunday, you can pose with us too. CCTS 2022. Eek, so excited. First timer. Yes, you're going to love it. You're going to have a great time. You're going to love it. All right. Well, that's it for tonight. So last night, IG actually cut my live feed off after 25 minutes, which it's never done that before. I don't know if that's like a new thing or if that was just a glitch from last night. So when I reposted the YouTube video, I just edited and, and reshot the last half of it and put it in there. Um, I'll have to pay attention tonight and see if it cuts it, cuts it off again when I go to repost it. So if you go to watch the live feed from last night, the last like 15 minutes is gone. I don't, I don't really know why. It's never done that before to me, so I don't know. If, again, I don't know if this is a new IG thing, maybe an update or something. I don't know. Uh, yes, SWS, uh, all the things, <laughs> the things. Yes, <laughs> Jennifer, you say slay SWS. I see, I see. I'm just saying there. I love it. Love that. I love that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna repost this and see what happens. See if more than 25 minutes gets posted. I don't know. If it doesn't, then we're gonna have to kind of adjust our, our uh, IG lives from here out. Uh, we may have to start going on to YouTube permanently. So if you're not over there, make sure you do get over there and subscribe and turn on those notifications. We may have to start going over there if IG is gonna start cutting my lives off because that's not cool. It's not cool. Not cool, you guys. Oh, she's not. <laughs> love so much, love it, that's great. <laughs> you do, you do love it, Jennifer, you can tell. <laughs> Okay, guys, that is it for this evening. Like I said, if you want to come work with me, suitsandposing.com is where I have to go. Uh, we do hair, makeup, suits, and posing. Um, and just keep these thoughts in mind whenever you're thinking about uh, sponsorships and things along that line, okay? Uh, hopefully this gave you some, some things to jot down and start thinking about, about how you want to actually represent yourself and you as a brand and which companies you actually want to represent too, right? Thank you again for joining us, and as always, subscribe, comment, like, turn on that notification bell, and come on back and join us for more amazing YouTube content. <laughs> you like that? All right. Uh, thank you again, you guys. I really appreciate the support. Let's bump up those subscriber lists so we can get some more content coming. Thanks.